Story time. It was 2007, I was with a couple of my friends camping. I was 16 and was just with some 16 to 18 year olds on this fun camping trip out in the woods behind some of these guys houses. We picked a spot in the clearing where it would be like a little party kind of site although I don't do drugs or even smoke weed or any of that. I grew up with that going on all around me so I tried to avoid it. But nobody brought weed or anything along, I don't think. So we all hung out in this clearing with three different tents set up and with a fire pit in the middle. We had planned to spend four to five days, it was summer vacation so we didn't have school, I think this was early August. Anyway, we all decided to hang out in the clearing, roasting marshmallows and everyone but me having beers. I sat around making s'mores and the sun was just beginning to set and we were all having a good time. At around 7 or so, we heard something moving in the bushes nearby and someone threw an empty beer bottle at the bushes. We heard the smash and watched something climb out of the bushes and lumber back into the trees. We thought it was just some psycho person but everyone got a little bit nervous. Later that night I was asleep in the tent with three other people, the only person I knew was my friend, Paul, who invited me along. I remember everything being silent and then I heard a sort of popping sound by the fire and we all sat up. Crawling out, we could hear people in the other tent's voices saying the F was that? Paul unzipped the tent and we crawled out. The fire which we had put out about an hour or two ago was now roaring with flames. We put it out and thought maybe someone poured gasoline all over the fire and lit a match or lighter and lit the fire. But we never heard the gas pouring or a match being struck slash lighter being flicked. We also didn't hear anybody running away because we would have heard them. It was at this point, there was an awful smell but had a stuffy nose and couldn't make it out really. It may have been a skunk but Paul said one of the other guys said, it was like rotten meat but we had not smelled it earlier or since. Some other people began holding their shirts up to their noses as if a pungent smell had just appeared. We were all a little on edge but I guess some people agreed F it, let's just stay here. Nobody brought any guns to fend ourselves off but one guy, who was about 18 said he had a pocket knife. Our second day here, nothing happened until it became night again. At around 4 am, we were all fast asleep and awoken by noises behind our tent. We started to get out when Paul said shut the F up for a minute. We sat in silence listening to the noises which sounded like voices I couldn't make out. The voices seemed to be coming closer to us and we quietly climbed out of the tent. The voices still approaching our camp, the two other guys in our tent crept to the other tents and woke the other people up telling them to get out here at once. All 13 of us stood quietly listening to the voices get closer and louder. At the point where they had gotten behind our tent, we heard the voices stop but an eerie humming noise was coming from the trees all around us. One of the guys, I think named Ben, who was 17 or 18 walked to about 10 feet from the tree line where the voices had been coming from. He said oi. Who is there? And we quietly waited for a response. We heard nothing except distant crickets. He walked back to us and right then we heard the voices moving away which to me sounded like what Ben had asked Oi. Who's there? But it didn't sound like Ben moving away, almost like something was trying to mimic what he sounded like. I could hear the voice sort of crackly and jumpy repeating those words as it moved off into the distance. We all got back to our tents but didn't sleep. The next day, someone had left to their house to grab something. They came back a little later with a potato gun saying he'd shoot the F out of the thing bothering our campsite. Around 7 PM, not really partying but just huddled around the fire, a girl, just one of two stands up, practically pissing herself and we find out what's wrong. Here's one of the similarities I found with the well-known goat man story, she said that last night, when we were listening to the voices, there was another person with us. There was 13 of us now but she insisted that there had been a 14th. Reading the Anansi Goat Man story and connecting that experience later made my butt clench. We all started to get nervous again and Ben told us he was going to run back to his house, he and Potato Gun Guy were neighbors, 
and he said he was going to get his father to come out here with a gun and wait. Someone went with him and Paul and I were just talking to each other about how we could leave early if shit got too chaotic which is was starting to get to now. We were in the middle of talking about how we should pack up when we saw Ben standing in the woods. It was clearly him with his blue hoodie and jeans and he was looking straight at us from about 40 feet away but we didn't know what the F he was doing. The person who went with him wasn't standing next to him, it was just him standing alone watching us. It was a 25 minute walk back to his house but he couldn't have been back 5 minutes later. Everyone got really uncomfortable and people started yelling hey Ben. What are you doing? But he just kept watching us. We watched as he seemed to slink back into the trees. By now, people were scared out of their minds and I was too. Why was Ben being a prick and just staring at us and not doing anything? We decided to pile into one tent and wait. A short while later the other Ben turned up with his dad and the other person that went with him and his dad was holding a hunting rifle. Ben told him what happened with the voices and the father walked that way into the trees and took a look around. He said it felt like eyes were watching him from every direction. Paul then told Ben's dad that we just saw another Ben standing in the woods staring at us. Ben's dad walked over there and looked around too. He came back and said he could stay with us in the gun but said he would control it because if we got drunk and started shooting a gun around, we'd all kill ourselves. He slept in Ben's tent. It was our third night here and it was really creepy. We quietly listened for it. Being anywhere nearby. Paul had a funny look in his eyes and started sweating. He later told me that while we were all sitting around, he saw a strange figure moving through the woods moving its arms around in a strange jumpy motion. Around 2 AM, we were all going to get ready for bed and we heard it. It was saying something but in a highish voice. It sounded like it was saying oi. Who's there? Completely mimicking what Ben had said the night before. Ben's dad tried to pinpoint where the voice was coming from and fired a shot into the trees. That gunshot was loud as F. Right after, we could hear a creepy chanting like male voice. I was scared, Paul was scared, everyone was. The chanting sounded like a deep voice chanting so not multiple people. Underneath the chanting, we could hear something mumbling noises. Again another shot was fired but I saw what Ben's dad was shooting at, it was a figure crouched low by some bushes. It looked like a direct hit but the figure did not move, instead it stood up, sort of hunched over and moved back into the forest. We raced back into our tents and I could hear crying and moaning coming from right behind our tent. All four of us in the tent were getting scared and then I could kind of smell a strong vinegar smell that was very powerful. Then, I noticed what looked like fingertips moving along the tent wall into the door and moved down the zipper to grab the part you used to open. Paul dove over to the zipper and held it down as whoever or whatever tried to pull it open. Paul and one other guy in the tent started yelling who's out there? And after a minute, we could hear a screeching noise as this thing took off into the darkness. We decided to say F the fourth and fifth day, let's get out of here in the morning. Here's the scariest experience of that night. At 3.45 AM, checking my watch, I had to go pee. Since what had just occurred not long ago, I decided I wasn't getting out of the tent and maybe I could stick my bird out of a small zipper opening but then I pictured whatever it was out there biting or ripping my thing off so I decided to open up the tent, slither outside just slightly and pee to the side of the door. As soon as I was finished, I noticed someone by the furthest tent away. I grabbed my flashlight beside my pillow and turned it on and shined it towards the person. It looked like Paul, back facing to me, hunched over by the tent. But Paul was right behind me sleeping in the tent. I crawled back inside but kept my light shined on the other Paul. I whispered Paul, wake up. And the moment he did, I looked outside to see the other Paul stand up and turn facing toward me and stare at me. I dove back in and leapt under my sleeping bag and huddled there awake as I explained to Paul what I had just seen. I guess at one point in the night, I was facing another way and was freaking out but one of the guys in the tent said he woke up, eyes still half closed as he rolled over, he could see. 
The other Paul looking through the part in the tent flap I didn't close. He thought it was just Paul coming to wake them up but realized the real Paul was asleep right beside him. We packed up and left. I have spent 20 years in park and recreational management. Currently serving in the National Park Service as a superintendent, I've seen and heard many strange things while working in the backcountry. This email is to report an encounter I had with a cat thing while in the backcountry. This occurred during the winter of 2010 and going into 2011. It was in the early afternoon. I left the ranger cabin and traveled four and a half miles up the trail to a backcountry emergency shelter. This shelter is a replacement of the original shelter which burned down in the late 1980s. It had been seen by many users, but the last six years especially, I had really been the only person to stay there. I arrived at the shelter by 4 pm and immediately got my gear outside. I was working on my snowshoes when I heard a distant bellowing howl. It was a howl that I never heard before. I am very well versed in all the howls of wolf coyotes and other animals, but this was different, way different. It was much deeper, had a lot more growl and distortion to the timbre. It was definitely not a wolf, elk, bear, or any mammal that I'm familiar with. For the matter, the noise was a bellow howl that went for about a minute with a slight pause between the bellows and howls. It was a very, very strong howl. But also, as terrified as I was by hearing this, I was curious. I grabbed my pack and my snowshoes, began walking toward the source of the vocalization. I walked about three-fourths of a mile to a large rise on the ridgeline. As I walked towards the ridge, that's when I began to notice several deer carcasses. Deer, by the way, are abundant in the area. I see them all the time. We actually have several types, but the most common is whitetail. I immediately thought something was hunting them. Upon closer inspection, the three visible carcasses I've seen were very horribly mutilated. What's also more strange is that the corpses were not eaten on, they were just ripped up. The doe, the closest one that I was to, had her neck ripped open and her head was missing. Something visibly tore this animal's head off, but there were no bite marks or claw marks on the animal. It just seemed like a brutal kill. Something wasn't right. As that thought is in my head, I hear and notice the bellow slash howl again, and this time it appeared more powerful and closer. I decided to get up the ridge and see if I could see what was responsible. Assuming that the bellowing and howling was the creature responsible. I quickly moved up the ridge, but as I neared the top, the bellows and howls happened again, only this time they were getting even closer. I approached the ridge top and heard the noise coming from a small meadow. As I looked across the small meadow, I noticed this creature. It was standing on the other side of the ridge top. It was this strange looking thing. I call it a cat because that's the closest that it resembled, but it was far too distorted, far too different. It was much more like if you mixed a person or a human being with a lion and a mountain lion. I very visibly remember the brindle coloring and the mane around its neck. It was definitely larger than a mountain lion. The animal was facing my direction but at about a 45 degree angle. I could see its front quarters very well. As I watched it, Staring at it intently, it never appeared to move, and the sound it was making completely stopped. And the entire time I was staring at it, I was trying to process what animal am I seeing, but I could not make it out. It was on all fours and looked very, very strange. I want to say I was probably there for 5 minutes, but in actuality, I was probably only staring at it for maybe 30 seconds at 45 at most. The thought had occurred to me that I better leave now before whatever this giant cat is notices me and decides to make me its next meal or do what it did to the deer. Now as I'm going down the ridge line, I could hear something coming up the hill behind. I turned around and looked up the trail, there were two deer running. When I turned back down, I could see the cat now moving in my direction. So. I walked quickly to the far edge of the ridge and saw this thing now walking about 75 yards. As it walked up the hill, it would stop every few steps and look back at me. 
It continued this walking looking behavior until it was completely out of sight, far over the ridge line. I stayed there for about 5 minutes and I never heard it bellow or howl again after that. I very hastily walked back down the hill, packed up my gear, and began my 6 mile walk back all the way around the cabin, the long way. I've never seen this creature again, and I think it's safe to presume that this was the creature's territory and it was hunting the deer because the portion of backcountry I was on, that entire ridge line, is very untouched. It was a portion even I'm very unfamiliar with. As the years have gone on, I've told a few friends and colleagues. They're convinced I just saw a mountain lion from far away, but if it really was a mountain lion, we're talking about a severely deformed mountain lion. I know what mountain lions look like. This was not it. I have seen many mountain lions in my career. I do think it was hunting the deer on the ridge line, and possibly I irritated it. I've also come across several other eyewitness stories similar to mine describing a creature very similar in the National Park Service but have never come across any real concrete evidence of its existence other than my one eyewitness story that I have myself. And this is why I'm sending you my email. I've never heard of any cryptid sightings in the Smokies, but I have seen and heard of several unexplained phenomena. Several of my co-workers have also, at different times, witness strange lights over the mountains at nighttime. In fact, there was one instance where a park ranger, a friend of mine, and his girlfriend saw a UFO over the park. I myself have never seen such a thing, but I take his word for it. He's an older gentleman, single, not married, and has no reason to fabricate any story, nor is he much of a storyteller or jokester. He's also very, very serious, especially when he tells that story. He went into more detail and described it like a large black triangle craft that kind of hovered over the park and then just faded out, as in it just went translucent and disappeared. I know there's a lot of weird stuff that occurs out here. My sighting and experience included. Keep up the good work. Lately, I've been seeing a lot more stories on Reddit about Yowie sightings and encounters. So, I myself was driving home one evening and saw something that disturbed me to my core. Myself and two fellow officers were driving down this country road towards the station. It was maybe right about 1 in the morning after a very long shift. The roads can be pretty dangerous sometimes, and we're always on high alert for anything out of the ordinary. We spotted something up ahead near an old abandoned building, so we slowed down to see what it was. It was the movement that caught our eye. As we got closer, I realized it was not any animal we'd ever seen. It was tall, bipedal, hairy, with big eyes, and had claws like a bear, but it clearly was not a bear. But like a bear, it also stood upright. It was just standing there, looking right at us. It did not have any clothes on either, so I was pretty rattled. We pulled up about several hundred feet away, stopped to get a better look at it. We knew this wasn't one of the new aliens they're always talking about. This was something else. Though I will admit, we're all fairly seasoned officers, this thing really spooked us. Enough that one of my fellow officers turned around right then, drove off without saying anything to me or my other friend. He must have had his reasons that he took off. While we were still in the process of trying to find out what happened, this thing began making strange sounds. We'd try to get a closer look, but we felt too afraid to get closer. I feel like had we gotten out of the car and gone up the hill to where this was, whatever that thing was, it would have attacked us. Was it a yaoi? It just had this sort of dangerous demeanor about it. So, we decided to leave it. Instead, I'm kind of glad my partner took off. I think he knew something I did not back then. I know for sure now, though. Cryptids are real, and Yowie is one of them for sure. In fact, my childhood friend saw another one years ago in the forest near his home. Once we were young teenagers, he's been trying to convince me ever since that all those other stories we've heard are probably true. I guess we know that he was right about at least some of them. I don't know what's going on, 
but I'm glad to see there are others out there like me and my friend who believe in these creatures and are not afraid to speak out about it. It's time we get the word out that they are real. People need to recognize this kind of thing is happening every day all around us, even if most people can't see it or just simply refuse to accept it. That, and stop perpetuating the stories and rumors about Sasquatch and Bigfoot being demons or something. We know better than that by now, right? I'm Akita, Sioux native that had this terrifying encounter with an unknown predator. So I grew up in the heart of the Appalachians, near a dense and mysterious woodland. My closest companion in this wilderness was Red Bull, a fearless and adventurous friend who shared my curiosity for the unknown. One fateful day, after a successful bison hunt, Red Bull and I decided to venture deeper into the woods in search of the carcass we had left behind. As we made our way through the underbrush, a sudden chill swept through the forest, causing the hairs on the back of my neck to stand on end. I exchanged a wary glance with Red Bull, both of us sensing an eerie presence lurking nearby. The familiar sounds of the woods seemed to fade into an unnatural silence. Then, we saw it. Emerging from the darkness was a figure unlike anything we had ever encountered. It stood tall on its two hind legs, its elongated arms brushing against the ground like a bear in disguise. The creature's gaunt frame gave an impression of extreme malnourishment, with a crooked spine that contorted its form. Its face was a grotesque sight, lacking the majestic horns of a bull but adorned with a tangled mane of neck hair. Its skin, bathed in the ethereal glow of moonlight, shimmered with a haunting gray hue, and its eyes glowed with an unnatural, piercing light. My heart pounded in my chest as I locked eyes with this monstrous cryptid. Its presence sent a shiver down my spine, and I could feel the weight of its gaze penetrating my very soul. In sheer terror, Red Bull and I turned and ran for our lives. Our pounding footsteps echoed through the forest, accompanied by the echoing howls of the creature in pursuit. It seemed relentless, its unearthly speed closing in on us. But just as it drew dangerously close, an inexplicable change came over the creature. It abruptly ceased its pursuit, losing interest in our escape. Breathless and trembling, we reached the safety of our tribe's encampment. We dared not speak of what we had witnessed, fearing that our story would be met with disbelief or worse, that it would invite the creature's return. We sought solace in each other's silence, yet the memory of that nightmarish encounter haunted our thoughts. I never really talked about this but 1968. I was on an ambush patrol out of a fire base in Vietnam. We used to go out at night like an Indian raiding party and basically try to F up the resupply of the Vietnamese around our area. We had a few players in the fight including the howitzers of the fire base and the spooky gunships. We would use both for backup when things got sticky. We also could call movers which were Mustangs and F-4 or Thunder Chiefs to run a hot nape, napalm, drop on our numbers. So we were out playing in the woods chasing Charlie and harassing his pack animals and we see the mother load, bicycle tracks. They were deep and wide bikes were carrying a hell of a load and the edges were different so it was many bikes in step. Sweet time to party. So I won't lie about it we used to smoke a lot of grass and it was mostly drizzled with opium. I was 19 in a weird hostile country for reasons I didn't get, killing people I had no reason to kill so you would do drugs too, we smoked up on a squat and set out to kill anything that moved. We had Spooky flying in to help as soon as we let him know the pan was hot. Spooky would circle us and dump lead rain into the woods. Spooky runs were like calling in a flying chainsaw. Everything got cut to bits and usually if a weed and a stick was left standing then the enemy got lucky. We heard the trail going live and knew we had a great ambush spot. The smell hit me it was wrong, usually in the wet jungle you smell the odor of men. Urine and cigarettes and candles that the Vietnamese used to guide their way. Those were normal smells, rice and sweet milk smells things like that were okay this was not okay. It almost smelled like rotten meat. More dense and concentrated than any smell should have been, 
A few of us picked up on it. We dumped our fire in and took return fire, back and forth as usual. The spot we picked was a huge slow bend where the trail went uphill and was basically protected by a 12 to 15 foot wide band of brush and trees and then a dirt hill behind it, nowhere to run or hide. Lights kept coming down toward us and we kept shooting, noise and movement got lead on it. It was crazy they just kept coming to the spot. Spooky came in did her job and the band of trees was gone. The whole trail was open no way Charlie could survive any of this. So many rounds screamed into the hill. We sat on the spot till morning the sun came up and we went up to do our body count. Pointless because they dragged off the dead so you guessed based on heel marks and drips of blood, not a single body. No drags no evidence a single thing had been there. Bullet holes and trees chewed up. Not a single thing to show we had hit anything. We all agreed we saw something, we all agreed we saw no evidence of humans dead or otherwise. So about a week later guys on patrol call in a fast mover strike to napalm the same area. No bodies no marks nothing. In talking about it we all discovered that we had the same smell experience, the dead rotten meat smell. I think this happened about four times where napalm and gunships tore the place apart and never was anything found. No dropped gear, no blood. Nothing like poof, they were gone. We saw soldiers, we saw bikes and boxes and bags it was there. I can't explain it and I can't offer a thought. I know what I saw and smelled and felt I just can't tell you where they went. The hill was heavily bombed CO thought maybe a tunnel complex ran under and the tunnels were used as an escape route. That doesn't work in my mind. Napalm is as indiscriminate of a killer as one can get, even if you were standing ready to jump in a tunnel napalm is still going to melt your lungs. I got some shrapnel in my calf and shin another night so I never had an ambush on that trail area again but as far as I know it was never explained. Being set out like that even with a bunch of guys we were still basically alone and had to live with the rules of the jungle. Monkeys and cats and things like that mess with your mind. This was different. You felt nothing the whole I feel and looking at me wasn't part of it. None of us felt afraid or sensed something different than any ambush. It just happened. So. It was my junior year of college and every year, around October or November my girlfriend's sorority would have a function called, The Great Outdoors. Every girl in the sorority invites a date and things usually get pretty rowdy, 125 plus people. Anyways, the location of this event changes each year. This year, we were set to go about two hours from campus to a secluded camping ground that was in Missouri. We all attended the University of Arkansas, which is in the Ozark Mountains and close to the MO border. So, we left for this function late in the afternoon, and didn't take the exit for the campground until the sun was beginning to set. After taking the exit, we were told to follow signs that the sorority had set up along the way to get us to the campsite. Easy enough, they were all in bright pink and just indicated when and where to turn. We had been following these signs for about 45 minutes when I realized it had been about 20 minutes since we had seen our last sign that indicated a turn. With that being said, the dirt road we were on was getting more and more into the depths of the woods and the you could tell that this road had been way less traveled on than any of the others we had been on. A few minutes go by, I start to get worried but don't want to freak out the girls in the car, so I just sit back and keep looking for pink signs. Finally, we stumble upon a sort of hidden house that was not hidden in the woods, but definitely didn't stand out. The dirt road dead ended at the house and the only way to turn around would be to pull up close to the house where there was small patch of gravel, we were in a four-door non-four-wheel drive car. Upon pulling up toward the house, I see two to three men standing off the side of the road, still hidden in the dark, yet visible. All with, what seemed to be, Kevlar vest on and what looked like sub-automatic guns, I own 8 guns and would say they resembled a UMP-45. I immediately tell my buddy to stop the car and put it in reverse. He does not. He continues to drive up towards the house to turn around. Obviously he had not noticed the guns. 
He rolls down the window and explains the situation, now obviously seeing the guns. The man told us that he wasn't sure where we were headed, but the road dead ends here and that we best get headed in the other direction, before things start to get scary for us. Needless to say we screamed out of there, girls were crying. Upon rolling out, me and the other guy noticed about 20 propane tanks on the side of the house. They were definitely cooking a lot of meth. It was the most hills have eyes experience I have ever had. My encounter with a Bigfoot happened when I was 11 which was 8 years ago. I lived near Childress, Texas. I was out playing in the backyard against the tree line. I was playing with rocks and sticks, then I noticed trash leading into the woods so I started to follow it and picked up the trash. Then all of a sudden I heard leaves crunching and I looked around and I saw a deer just standing there. I didn't bother the deer and continued to pick up the trash. As I was doing so I felt something watching me. At first I thought it was the deer but I looked and it wasn't looking at me so I kept looking at the deer and all of a sudden the deer looked up and stood there not looking at me but to the left. So I followed its view and I saw something tall and black standing behind some trees. I didn't know what it was so I just watched it and the deer. I kept watching them for about a minute then the deer took off and once I looked over at the other thing I saw that it was watching me. I didn't feel like I was in danger so I picked up the rest and stood up. I looked around for it but it was gone I didn't know exactly what I saw but it felt friendly like it was watching over me while I was picking up the trash. I didn't see it again after that. I still went into the woods to play hoping it would come back but it didn't. As I've grown older I'm sure that this black creature was a Bigfoot. I was underway on a submarine. There were about 125 men on board, but I was standing lookout on the surface. So it was just me and a single officer on the bridge. Normally we would also have a gunner up there, but we were in the about as far from any other human as you can physically be on earth, over one of the deepest parts of the ocean in the middle of the night. Mind you, in the sail slash bridge of a submarine you are 20-ish feet above the surface of the water. Well, on one of my visual sweeps I notice I cannot see the stern light. I tell the officer, because if the stern light is out you are breaking the law. Then we both realize the entire boat is slowly disappearing below us. It was a large, slow-moving wave crawling up the ship. When we were at the top of the wave I put my hand down and touched the water. Again, I should have been more than 20 feet above that water. If that wave had been another 10 feet higher, there is a good chance the officer and I would not be alive. Our self-inflating vests would have gone off, and we would have been anchored to the ship by our harnesses. Helpless little buoys getting dragged along by the ship and ocean. Then we would have crashed against the hull and masts as the wave passed. We immediately called the captain to secure the bridge because of hazardous conditions, and he approved of this. When we got below decks we found out that the wave had drained hundreds of thousands gallons of seawater through the drainage ports in the sail. This was an otherwise calm night. We were often told to be on the lookout for rogue waves, especially then, because two sailors on another submarine had been killed by one a few months earlier. The only rogue wave I ever experienced I could not see coming till it was at my feet. After years of sailing, this was the night I truly realized what a scary place the ocean could be. So back in high school when I lived in my hometown, I used to go stargazing at night by hiking into the hills. One of my favorite points overlooked a large housing tract on the north side of the town, but was relatively secluded with how the hills formed a crest line above these residences. More importantly, this crest line blocked a significant amount of light pollution and allowed for better star viewing. So, one night, I took a friend with me up into the hills to go stargazing. She and I were pretty alright friends, but I mostly asked her along because I preferred not to be alone out at night if I could help it. Plus, I was definitely feeling down and needed someone to talk with about how I'd been feeling lately. So while we're stargazing, she and I got to talking and eventually I really broke down and cried. 
We had probably been up there at least a few hours, so it was really late at this point, and we were about a mile up in the hills. So as I'm calming down my friend gets really quiet. I notice she's staring up into the peaks of the foothills and I follow her gaze. And, up behind the peaks, I suddenly notice there's an incredibly dark patch in the sky. Now, to elaborate a little, at this point I wasn't on drugs, or drinking, or in any way hallucinating. In fact, at the time, I really prided myself on always relying on rational and reasonable explanations for phenomenon in the world. But this was something otherworldly. The best I can describe this thing was as a relatively large, dark patch, seemingly spherical in shape, but also with something more angular orbiting its center. As though the orbiting object was turning itself end over end while the central, gyroscope-like center was flying in a wide arc around the foothill mountaintops. It felt as though it was relatively close, as these foothills are not particularly tall, but was entirely silent. She and I watched the thing fly for a few minutes, whereby it dipped behind some hills and never resurfaced. I will say we definitely saw it weave its way around some peaks, so it wasn't just something tethered and certainly wasn't something floating without direction. The thing had deliberate, slow movement, always turning end over end around that inner sphere slash circle like object. It wasn't easy to see because of the low light conditions, but the stars and hills provided some backdrop to distinguish the figure from the background. Now, logically, we both agreed that there had to be an explanation. Our hometown features a reserve air force base and it is possible that it was something for meteorological purposes or even something more stealthy from the base. But to this day, she and I have no idea what we saw in those hills. After that object dipped away, we promptly hiked back to our car and drove off. We kept talking about it for the rest of the night, freaking each other out with alien stories about potentially avoiding being abducted but to this day I maintain it was probably military related. Anyway, that's my UFO story. I have a number of other hiking slash camping stories too, but this one seemed to be the most creepy. Though there was also the time I was on a three-day hike in the desert, found a knife in some rocks on the first day and then on the second night had the sky open up or reveal thousands of stars due to natural phenomenon unbeknownst to me at the time. It was mysterious and amazing when I was in the moment of it though. I was working on a pot farm in the Trinity Pines which is like the size of a subdivision and the properties are divided up like that too so there's one thousands of one to two acre pot farms right next to each other. The pines are notorious for people disappearing, large grow operations and crime in general. A friend and I were headed into town to get pizza and supplies for the roughly 20 people we were working on the hill with, it's about a 30 to 45 minute trip down dirt roads through the holler to a highway that leads into town but it's only about 12-15 miles away. It was early evening slash late afternoon. About 20 minutes into our trip, right before we're off the mountain, this girl comes running out of the trees flagging us down. We stop and let her into car thinking she's another trimmer who just wants a ride into town. I immediately notice she looks frantic so I ask her if she is alright and she responds in French and very broken English. From what I could gather, she had escaped from a trim job. They had her shackled or handcuffed to a workspace and she ran for it when they let her off to piss. Apparently she ran straight down the mountain and straight into us. She said the people who took her captive were Nazis and they had guns. We ended up dropping her off at the police station in town. I was walking down this old overgrown road, just after sunset. I was hunting with my dad, but he was like a couple hours up the trail besides me. Because the area we were hunting in is known for cougars I was carrying a pistol along with my 300 caliber savage hunting rifle. We were blacktail deer hunting. Anyways, along the way up I got this really spooky feeling. I picked up my pace, and grabbed my flashlight out of my backpack. I kept on walking. 
Then after a good 20 minutes of walking I unchamber my rifle and sling it so it's easier to carry because it's been 30 minutes past sunset. I'm still walking, I got like a mile left on the trail. That spooky feeling just keeps on getting more intense. I start picking up my pace. Eventually I hear a loud stick break, to my left behind me, up on top of the hill. Turn around and shine my light and see it for a second and I swear it looked like a cougar so I got out my pistol and loaded the chamber. I shouted loudly at it to try to scare it off, seemed like it worked. I put the safety back on and holstered the weapon. I start jogging, only like one fourth mile left. Then like 100 feet before I get to the end of a road a jackrabbit hops out and starts flying my way. Me being spooked as shit I pulled my pistol and shot at it twice. I hit it once and it went down. As it's clearly dead I run the truck, where my father is waiting, as he's scrambling to grab his rifle to see what the F happened. As I run up to him he asks what the F was that and I tell him. He then tells me to calm down, and helps me take off my backpack. After 10 minutes or so we go back to go collect the rabbit, but it's missing. I see the pool of blood where it died, right next to some cougar tracks. We don't hunt there anymore. I grew up in rural Oregon in the coast range. This is a mountainous area that is technically a northwest rainforest. Heavy undergrowth, untouched in most of the spots that we spent time in as kids. We weren't afraid of the forest, our house backed right up against it. Atop that, we had a guard dog that would start barking like a maniac if anyone or thing wandered near the property. Well my friends and I were playing that stupid game at twilight where you shoot an arrow in the air and then run around hoping it doesn't fall and pierce your brain. A novice archer, ha ha, we all were, shot one arrow that went way off and landed out somewhere in the trees. My two friends and I wandered into the forest towards it but stopped looking almost immediately seeing a strange green glow. The glow, we found while trudging in deeper was due to worms on leaves. Glow worms are a thing, apparently, and a surprise because this was the first time we'd seen them. Well we did what kids do, started collecting them. The next moment is frozen in my head because of its abruptness. Head down, pursing the leaves for worms, a loud crashing started up just up the mountain from us. This wasn't far away, Though, it was really close, meaning whatever it was had been there while we rifled through the plants. Two of us saw the cause, something very large and on two legs running down the hill at us. I would have thought human, except I could see the outline and this thing had no head over its shoulders. So, hulking headless thing running at us through the sword ferns and the fallen trees, we got the F out of there. Not to mention we weren't far from home. Maybe 5,000 feet? I don't remember hearing anything past the run which came out of someone's mouth. My parents didn't believe me. There really aren't any bears out in that area, just cougars and bobcats. I went back out the next day to verify that both the glow worms and the headless thing were real, but found evidence of neither. It was later on in my life that I saw the worms again, but never the headless. Whatever. Now keep in mind that I am very skeptical and don't even trust my own memory. If there was something like that in the woods, we'd have found some evidence. No one was camping in that area because, well, we'd have seen them at some other point, I grew up wandering the forest constantly. But the primal fear of being chased remains. Good day. Recently I went on a camping trip and ended up camping in the Black Hills National Forest in South Dakota. Nothing out of the ordinary besides a warning of bad weather and a general uneasy feeling going in. I assumed it was just anxiety from driving all day and the fact that I haven't tent camped without a group in years. I'm outdoorsy and trusted myself, I'm extremely respectful to land especially forest and was picking up garbage and burying waste when I found it. Me and my girl arrive to the site rather late, it's last minute and we decide to camp not too far off a dirt road in a designated camping spot with a tent and blankets in my truck. We set up the tent and watch the sun set before falling asleep in the tent. 
I have the feeling to leave my firearm locked up in my truck for some reason and decide to listen to my gut on this one. We crawl into bed and drift off to the sound of rain in the forest. I knew it was the anniversary of the Deadwood flood, but I don't pay too much mind to it. I awake at an unknown time to the sound of the tent zipper being opened. I sit straight up and see a face of pure black staring at me in the darkness with a massive grin on its face. All I can make out is eyes and a smile. I'm frozen in terror and blink a couple times to find it gone and the tent untouched. My girl who was laying next to me asks me if I'm okay and I just say it was a nightmare but I was okay and not to worry about me and to go back to bed. She falls asleep and I lay staring at the rain cover frozen in shock for a few hours. I've had night terrors or hallucinations but nothing like this, it was too real and it was too vivid to be a dream. This is her first time camping so I decided not to tell her in fear of scaring her away from something we both discovered we enjoyed together. I taught her to leave everything better than how you found it and how to be respectful and responsible and there was no bad intentions from either of us. I haven't paid much mind to it until tonight after talking about it with my roommate. I took it more as a warning than a threat. I've had spiritual encounters multiple times in my life all of which being positive and giving me guidance but this was different. Not a single word was spoken and I was genuinely scared for the first time. We left in a hurry with the excuse of getting on the road. I'm still freaked out. I'm mostly seeking guidance on recourses and to get opinions on what this could be. Don't normally follow this kind of community so excuse me if I missed anything. Feel free to ask questions. I work as an inspection clerk for a real estate agency in a medium-sized town, mining town. Needless to say I see a lot of houses. It's worthy noting that a lot of houses are creepy as hell. With big inspections, I could be in the house till it's getting dark out. In my job I take pictures of a range of categories in an area for example walls, ceiling, windows, floor, cupboards you get the picture. Noises, ticks and tacks are common accurates. I attribute them to the house settling, or the roof getting hot and cold etc. One day one of the agents comes to me and asks me to go do an inspection on a house she was too freaked out to do herself. This house had my hair on edge the moment I got in the front door. I would describe my feeling as an urge to get out or that I am in danger. From the start my senses are up in arms. They normally are as I am always aware that someone could come in behind me, I always lock the gates and main doors behind me because of this. Putting my feelings aside, I start my work. Doing the entrance, the dining room and get to the living room. There is a door to the front yard in the living room and I note that the windows, door and curtains fixtures are of an old style. So I note the house must be pretty old. I start by hearing someone's feet shuffling coming from the hallway behind me, like the morning in slippers going to make coffee with a yawn type of shuffle. I pause for a bit and listen but it doesn't happen again so I go back to work. Down the hallway there is a mirror at the end with two rooms on my right and two bathrooms to my left. I go into the first room on the right. I notice a strong odor and think it must be the carpet, turns out it was rotten. A lot of stains on the carpet and as I'm typing this out I hear a voice. I thought it was the agent checking up on me, so I walk to the front door and see nothing. So I go back to work feeling a little more on edge. I go back to working marking down the stains on the carpet and this time hear a distinctive no. I stop dead in my tracks and start looking around the room really freaked out. I finish the room and head to the main bedroom. I finish up the room without much happening. I'm walking out of the room into the hall typing notes on my phone. Out of the corner of my eye I see something that looks like a person in the mirror, directly on my right standing at the end of the hall. I turn to the mirror and it's gone, I look down the hall and there's nothing. I let out quite in big gasp as this happened and chuckled at myself. Heading into the room in front of me that leads to an entertainment area. I hear the shuffling again, from the hall. Now I'm really standing there listening. The first bedroom's door slams shut. Panicing him going through the whole house trying to find someone messing with me. Nothing comes up. 
I hear a female voice loudly saying move. This time I heard it. I really just freaking heard that. I start to head to the front door because at this stage my nerves have had it. As I get to the front door, the first room's door, that I have opened again, slams shut. So now I'm noping it out of the house. I stand outside collecting my nerves to go back in. I say a prayer for myself and go back into the entertainment area. Nothing much happens after that. Just some shuffling in hall as before, but eventually I'm too far to hear it. I finish the inspection and start heading out. Unlocking the front door I hear now. In the same voice. By this point I'm freaking done with this and I just say back yeah yeah I'm leaving and hightail it out of there as fast as I could. Later I learned the man staying there had lost his job and wife in the same month. His mother was sickly and in bed most of the time in that first room, hence the smell and the stains. I am unsure if she passed away in the house. All I know is he went missing for four months not paying rent and was evicted. The maintenance guy comes comes to me after the work is done and said dude that house is freaky telling me as guys were telling Gim stories about stuff happening like light switches turning on by themselves and moans and noises. The house if now being rented by the mines for their workers. I haven't heard from them yet. So my husband and I were watching a scary movie. We don't usually watch scary movies, but we thought it would be fun since our kid was staying with his grandparents for the night. About halfway through the movie we got bored of it and decided to call it a night. It was around 11.30 PM. We were watching it in our bed so we just turned off the TV and lights and laid down. Within maybe 30 seconds of turning off the movie, I hear a man talking. It sounded like it was coming from our basement. We live in a log home and we sleep in the loft which is open to the rest of the house. The stairs leading up to our room are made of half logs, so you can peer through them and see down into the stairs leading directly below into the basement, which also has no door. At first, I thought maybe I was imagining it. I have auditory hallucinations before I fall asleep all the time, so I thought that's what it was. We have a German Shepherd who sleeps at the top of the stairs in the loft with us and she hadn't seemed to notice anything. About 10 seconds after hearing the voice, I hear several other sounds. Sounds of something moving in the basement. Jostling and gentle thuds. At this point my husband whispers, did you hear that? And I'm like yes. And he says, it sounded like a man talking. And I'm like, OMG yes. So he jumps out of bed puts on his robe, gets the gun, and starts checking around the house. I have my phone up ready to dial 911 if need be. He starts in the basement, nothing. All the windows are closed and locked, and the alarms on them are undisturbed. Same with the sliding door. We check the rest of the house and still nothing. I'm super freaked out at this point. He has to get up early for work so we go back upstairs to our bed. He goes to sleep but I'm too freaked out and I stay up with a lamp on ready to attack the sneaky intruder until around 2 am when I was too tired to stay up any longer. I heard a couple more strange noises up until I fell asleep. Most of them I attributed to the house shifting. My box fan made a high pitched squealing noise a few times, which I've never noticed before. Almost sounded like bats squeaking. I just cannot relax about the situation because I can't come up with a solution as to why this happened. The house was secured. There's no way anyone could be inside. We live in a rural area and know our neighbors. They don't wander around our property. It just doesn't make sense. The voice didn't sound particularly threatening. It sounded like a country boy talking to his buddy. Not super loud, not quiet, just a casual interaction. Edit, I previously selected the wrong tag for this post. My bad guys. I don't believe in ghosts. If I see someone I don't know and trust, like on TV for example, telling a ghost story, I struggle to believe them. That being said, I had an experience when I was around 10 years old that I'm going to share today. This was in approximately 2003. 
My friend and I were walking to football training. I live in a quiet countryside town in Scotland. To get to the football training we would walk past the tennis courts as it saved a lot of time. The tennis courts are located at the bottom of a wide open grassy area. Next to the tennis courts is a sloped section of ground that runs the length of the court, I think it's meant to be the stand where people can sit or stand and watch. It's sort of like a grassy pyramid that's been stretched out in length. There is a path that leads down to the stand and just stops. On the far side of the stand is a small wooded area. We were on the path walking toward the tennis courts, it was broad daylight. No one is around. The wooded area briefly falls out of view as the path is on a slight decline. We walk up the hill of the stand onto the main body of it and there is a woman standing at the trees. She is stood with her hands clasped in front of her, looking directly at us. My friend and I are walking toward her. She is stood between a fence and a small stream that's guarded by a waist-height fence. We walk the length of the court, now less than 10 meters from her. She hasn't moved. She's just continued to stand and stare. We turn at the bottom of the court now with our back to her. We haven't said a word but we looked at each other and ran. The woman was gray in appearance but wasn't transparent or anything. She looked like a real person, but she was a sort of uniform color. Washed out looking. Clothes included. It's quite hard to describe. She didn't move once. And I don't mean she just stood still. She didn't move, at all. She was three-dimensional, but it was like she was a cutout that had been placed there. My first thought wasn't oh my god it's a ghost only afterward did we realize what might have just happened. There is nowhere this woman could have came from. There are two meter fences blocking everywhere apart from the far side entrance to the tennis court and the approach we used to get there. The far side entrance line of sight is never broken. The stand only obscures a part of the wooded section for a moment. She simply was not there, we broke line of sight for 5 to 10 seconds, and there she was. The village I live in is small. I had never seen this person before, and I haven't seen her since. For a good 10 years, that area would terrify me at night. I would hug the fence until I had to turn my back to the area we saw her at which point I would run. Doesn't matter how muddy the grass was, it was genuinely too frightening to care about the condition of my shoes. I don't know how to explain this. I tell people I don't believe in ghosts if they ask, but I always offer this story as a consolation. Looking back on it I wish I spent more time looking at her. As it was happening despite not realizing what I was potentially looking at, the unbroken eye contact was unsettling. It made it difficult to look at her. That friend and I don't speak anymore, we haven't for around 15 years but I bumped into him in the town about four years ago, the first question I asked him once the greetings were over and done with was, remember we saw that ghost? He said, I do mate, I. I've never been much of a believer, still not but I have no idea what could have caused this. For context I'm staying alone in a super remote cabin, it is very old and you can't walk around without the floors creaking. There is a small grave in the backyard with the bodies of the people who originally built the place. One morning I got woken up around 6.30 am by loud banging noises, it sounded like a very drunk person stumbling around and sort of bouncing off the walls and fumbling with things, but the sound stayed in one spot, weird description I know. At first I thought someone had broken in before realizing the floors were not creaking. The sound went on for a few minutes. Then slowing and returning, finally going away. I checked the whole house with nothing to be found. Later on I looked in the attic for a possible animal and still nothing, you can't even stand over the spot the noises came from. Plus it too loud for a small animal to make those noises. Lastly. I know it wasn't carbon monoxide or a waking dream deal, because I got some of the noises on video. It hasn't the loud ones, just a few small bumps as I was more worried about the person I believe to be in the house but it's still enough for me. So when I was 14 to 15 years old my parents owned a travel trailer. 
one of those you attach to the bumper of a truck. It had bunk beds in it and I would sleep on the top. We went on a trip near Cloudcroft NM during COVID we went to get out of the house. On the third night I remember getting up in the middle of the night. It was pitch black because we were out in the mountains. When I peeked out of the curtain I'd just see this figure in the dark and the only thing I could see is its piercing white eyes looking at me. I lay back down trying to sleep again. But not long after do I hear scratching on the floor I didn't get up I felt a presence behind me as if it was just looking at me. I just remember crying to sleep that night. The next encounter I had with I was in my own room I was 16 at the time it was around 12 am to 1 I was just scrolling through my phone before bed I turn off my phone and after 15 minutes of trying to go to bed I open my eyes and look at the foot of my bed and it was just staring at me again I put my head under my covers trying to get rid of it or to go away. It was just observing me I could feel it eyes seeing though me. My last encounter was also on a trip this time to San Antonio it was night again but this time my parents bought a new fifth wheel trailer and I had my own room with a door. I was staying up on my phone once again but this one is different if couldn't get in all I remember is that it was scratching at the door trying to get in after a while I think it gave up and thankfully left. I haven't had an encounter since then and hopefully I will never have two. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.